Hello and welcome to Escape the Cubicle, where every week I publish updates from my work in progress book. You can find out more about this project at escapethecubiclebook.com, where I'm writing a field guide for lifestyle entrepreneurs to find more creative and financial freedom in their lives. So what I'm doing is I'm publishing updates every week as I write this book and bouncing those ideas off the potential readers, you, the community, the listeners, the readers, the lifestyle entrepreneurs, finding out what you think as well and shaping it as I go along. Today on Escape the Cubicle, I want to talk about ideas because it's not about ideas. It's about making ideas happen. Now, one skill that I find entrepreneurs need to focus more on and perhaps a skill which they are uncomfortable with is hustle. And hustle really is at the other end of ideas when it comes to launching a business. Ideas come first. You start with an idea. The idea is a seed of a business. And hustle is the point at which you go out and you get customers. I think we spend far too much time on ideas. Now, one of the reasons is, is that ideas are comfortable. So you go to a meetup and people are talking about ideas for their business. But it ain't about ideas. It's not about having a good idea. It's about having good execution and good hustle. If you want to escape the cubicle, you have to hustle. I think of this like asking a girl or a guy out on a date. Now, ideas are the preparation, the research, the background, the setting the scene. But the hustle is the ask. You ain't going to get a date unless you ask. You can't get a date with ideas alone. And there are plenty of people out there that spend weeks, months, years on the idea side of dating. They never get to the point. They tiptoe around their potential partner. They never get to the right situation, the perfect moment to ask and so on. Ideas are comfortable, but they can also be showstoppers. And there's a big difference between an idea and a successful business. And I think this is where entrepreneurs get it wrong, is ideas do not make successful businesses. Now, in the book, The Seven Day Startup by Dan Norris, he talks about the difference between an entrepreneur and a entrepreneur. Now, the entrepreneur is someone who's passionate about growing the business, who gets out there and hustles. The entrepreneur does the things that brings customers, does what is necessary, does what it takes, whatever it takes to get customers. That means getting off his or her ass and getting out there and going and getting customers, often out of the office. A entrepreneur, however, focuses on the activities that are comfortable, the ideas. So sitting around thinking about the business, planning, you know, drawing up charts and forecasts and hypotheses about the business and prototypes and perfecting the product and so on. Now, in the, the book, Anything You Want by Derek Sivers, which is a fantastic book for entrepreneurs, he says that ideas are only multipliers. And if you were to take ideas and execution and put them together and multiply them, ideas by execution, the payoff is like this. A good idea may be worth $10. An excellent idea a hundred dollars. A lousy idea, one dollar. Lousy execution, zero dollars. Good execution, ten thousand dollars. Excellent execution, a million dollars. So if you took a, a lousy idea with excellent execution, you have a potential million dollar business. However, if you were to take an excellent idea with lousy execution, you have a zero dollar business. So I think one of the problems that we have in our culture is this myth of the genius idea. A long time ago, there's this legend that the Empress of China discovered silk by 
dropping the cocoon of a silkworm into her hot green tea and then pulling the cocoon out and then finding this long tensile string of fabric, which was silk, and then unraveling it and realizing it that, wow, this was a magical fabric that they could create all these wonderful garments out of. And that's how it goes. That's a legend. But the reality is historians have shown that the Empress of China, who is referred to in this legend, was not the discoverer, the inventor of silk. Silk had been in production by silk farmers around the the delta in which the uh, discoveries were made for many hundreds of years before this story appeared. And the reason is, is that we in our culture, we like to think that ideas emanate with one person. They're like a top-down process. Like This genius comes up with this idea and then we all kind of follow. And we sort of replicate this in the culture. We've got these shaggy-haired Einsteins or this guy Doc from Back to the Future. Or, you know, even in the startup world now, you have like Mark Zuckerberg, this guy, this teen in a hoodie, or, you know, whoever it is, you've got this media portrayal of this inventor who comes up with this genius idea, changes the world, becomes a billionaire, the rest is history. And we think that we have to do that too. We think that we have to come up with these genius ideas if we want to become successful. And what I'm trying to put to you in Escape the Cubicle is that if you want financial and creative freedom, stop thinking about ideas. Because if you try to create or try to invent this genius idea, you'll be spending a lifetime doing it. Now, in the book, What I Wish I Knew When I Was 20 by Tina Seelig, she talks about this exercise she gives her students at Stanford University, where the students in year one are tasked with creating a business, a successful business. But the challenge is that she gives them ideas to start with. Actually, I think this challenge goes that the students are asked on day one to think of the lousiest ideas possible. So the students sit around and they brainstorm that what would be the lousiest idea for a business? And they come up with things like um, cockroach sushi or a heart attack museum. Stuff that, you know, you think about it and think, oh my God, that would never work. But then she says to them, okay, look, take these ideas and I want you to turn these into successful businesses. And what she finds in almost all cases, students are able to turn those ideas into successful businesses. The cockroach suit, she becomes some kind of, you know, like experience where you go and try. It's like adventure food. You go and try adventurous food. You know, it's not for everybody, but then not all successful businesses are for everybody. There are a group of people that will come and try that stuff, right? Because they like the experience, they like the adventure, they like the bragging rights of talking to people that they went to this restaurant the other night and they sat around and they ate insects. That gets conversations going. That's the stuff that you can share on Instagram or Snapchat. That's what people want, an experience that they can share. So the point is not to get stuck on an idea. There are no bad ideas. So get over yours. If you want to escape the cubicle, stop thinking about the idea. Take a half-baked idea, a bad idea, and focus on execution because things are going to change anyway. So I invest in startups. I mentor entrepreneurs. I work a lot with entrepreneurs in my masterminds or in my coaching and what I find is this, that one of the biggest showstoppers is the compulsion of an entrepreneur to focus on finding an idea that they think will change the world. They think they have to create the next billion dollar app or an app, an app that needs to be listed on NASDAQ or some product which is going to change the world. 
Um, my advice to you is this. Forget it. Stop worrying about that. You can be hugely successful if you stop focusing on the idea and focus all your energies on the execution. And what I mean by that is get your product into the hands of a paying customer and worry about the rest later on. Because all your assumptions about the idea will be proven wrong anyway. As they say in military adages, no plan ever survives the enemy. So forget about planning, forget about ideas, forget about assumptions. Take a half-baked idea and run with it. Because the sooner you can do that, the sooner you can get the show moving, the sooner you can build momentum. The sooner you can build momentum, the sooner you get feedback, the sooner you really understand the problem that your customer has. And it isn't about problem. Sorry, it isn't about ideas. It's about solving a problem that people like you have every day. That is how you can be successful. That is how you can escape the cubicle. So my name is Graham Brown. Hopefully you enjoyed this sample from my upcoming book. This is just ideas, no pun intended, from the book, snippets from the book that I am fleshing out, putting it into the written format and publishing on a weekly basis. If you like it, let me know. Sign up to the newsletter on ups. Sorry. Sign up to the newsletter on escape the escape the cubicle book.com escape the cubicle book.com go to there join the newsletter get a weekly update on the book as and when it's published hopefully you can join me on this journey my name is graham brown this is escape the cubicle